And so, one name that is given to these families is the Illuminati, the Illuminated Ones. They know more than we do because they keep what, we, what they know from us. And behind the corporations, different masks on the same face, is actually a corporation. Different directors, different front men, not always, mind, interconnected directorships, but at control in the hands of the few. And it's the same with politics. Presidents, prime ministers, heads of the World Bank, Secretary General of NATO, they are perceived to be in the red bit at the top in terms of their own hierarchy. No, no. They're some way down. I'm probably being optimistic with this. They are there. The here today, come tomorrow people that I mentioned earlier are there simply to fill the public positions through which those that operate in the shadows above them in the pyramid dictate the policy. And that's why the policy never changes, no matter what government's in power. An incessant centralization. Tell people, if they say no to just one thing, say no to the microchip. Because he said, even those that are becoming aware of it, and this is way back, this is like I say, 97, and some were, most weren't, think it's about electronic tagging. And on one level he said it is. He said, but the real reason for microchipping is because once you've got a microchip inside you, you will, can be electronically connected to a computer system that can manipulate you physically, take you out from a distance, that can manipulate you emotionally, because the body's an electrochemical entity. You get hold of the body, access the body chemically or electrically, you, you, you can do mayhem. And when we feel emotion or think, it is an electrochemical process. So if you get a microchip inside you manipulating that process, they can manipulate the way you think. They, as he said, they can make people aggressive, they can make people docile, either as an individual or en masse. You basically become a robot, he was saying. Say no to the microchip. Fear. Fear, the four-letter word that controls the world. Once you get people in fear, they will look outside of themselves for people or organizations to protect them from what they have been manipulated to fear. Fear is the greatest of all mass mind manipulation techniques. Because of fear, we have this introduced, justified by what I've been talking about. This, this is a poster from Germany in 1934. That's a poster from London today. It is very important to understand that when you fear loss, fear death, fear war, fear terrorism, or fear change, you are giving others the ability to control you based on those fears. When you fight against poverty or against racism, when you fight for relationships or for freedom, you are outwardly attempting to repress that which has been placed before you to conquer inwardly. These situations are mirrors of our fears. This is why it is important to love and only love. Love those who stand with you, but especially those who stand against you. Don't look at your fears as a threat. Rather understand that this material world is only a physical manifestation of either the love or fear in your consciousness. We're going through a sieve here. Wheat from the shack, sheep from the goats, exactly as prophesied, exactly on time, we're going to go through the eye of the needle, folks. And you don't get through that eye encumbered. I bet you've noticed things falling off, haven't you? <laughs> First, all kinds of considerations about who you are and who you should be. Those things have fairly well dissipated, or you wouldn't be in this room. Maybe some job positions. Maybe a relationship or two <laughs> have just sort of peeled off. <laughs> Expect a lot more of that. The um, CIA scientist told me in 1997, when no one was talking about nanotechnology, that the microchips outside of the public arena in the secret projects were so small they can be inserted um, in a hypodermic needle during vaccination programs and of course the people giving the vaccination have no idea that that's the case
Aspartame is a sugar substitute. Have a look for this if you haven't come across it. It's in virtually everything now. And aspartame is a uh, excitotoxin, they call it. It excites brain cells and destroys them. It stops the brain working efficiently. They sent letters out to um, naval pilots in, in America a few uh, years ago telling them not to drink soft drinks with aspartame in before they fly because it affects their brain's ability to think and, and, and sharp. And who brought aspartame into existence? Donald Rumsfeld. He was head of Cell Pharmaceuticals. Um, they couldn't get uh, aspartame through the uh, Food and Drug Administration checks in America to become part of you know, the food that we eat and drink. And so they appointed him because he was close friends with the Reagan-Bush administration. And the Reagan-Bush administration changed the head of the Food and Drug Administration um, when he came in. And suddenly the checks were forgotten and aspartame uh, came out. And Monsanto now control aspartame as they control GM food. Fluoride in the water is an excitotoxin. It excites brain cells, destroys them, and it suppresses thought. The first known time that fluoride was put into water supplies was in the Nazi concentration camps to keep the people docile. Genetically modified food is designed to genetically modify us. Vaccines, 25 vaccinations before the age of two with a growing, still developing immune system. All the stuff they give us, electromagnetic soup, the rabbit hole is seriously deep. I think that it's all about keeping the clamp on. They're trying to keep the clamp on so that people cannot become more conscious and take back their, their rights as human beings. You know, and also it's like as the whole mainstream kind of narrative is becoming more and more like a sort of toxic cartoon, you know, for anybody who has a kind of intelligence, you know, they have to at a certain point just begin to question this. You know, it's like if you read the New York Times every day and that's your vision of reality, there's just like no hope for you. I mean, there's just there's just nothing left in, the, in that thing to hang on to. Um, so, you know, it's just going to be a very polarizing situation for the next few years. All propaganda must be so popular on such an intellectual level that even the most stupid of those towards whom it is directed will understand it. People can be made to perceive paradise as hell and the other way round to consider the most wretched sort of life a paradise. On the basic intellectual level. It's the terrorists and we've got to protect you from the terrorists so we've got to take your freedoms away so we can protect your freedom. Oh, that sounds good, I'll vote for him. <laughs> there are real beings out there who have a real effect on what's happening here. And these positive forces, it's my understanding, are guiding us through an evolution on the planet. And they basically want to make sure that it doesn't break. They want to make sure that things stay as clean as they possibly can right up to 2012 which is when this apparent dimensional shift event happens. And so there is a very deliberate effort being made to thwart and to offset the, those kinds of negative future po possibilities. That's why, like, for example, almartinraw.com had this whole whistleblower thing that came out about how the Bush administration was planning, was planning to put in fake weapons of mass destruction in Iraq because if they could have found, and they even said it on the, on the news, remember that? We, we know there's 10,000 gallons of anthrax and da 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 da, and it's, yeah. it's right there in Tikrit around Baghdad, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, that's because that's where they're going to put it. Yeah. But then what happens is somebody else finds out they're going to do this yeah. this fake thing, yeah. and then they go and frag the team that does it and kill them on friendly fire. Yeah. And now they're out there somewhere. Nobody knows where the hell they are. Yeah. So the point is that all these little things keep happening, which appear to be random but they're guided by higher intelligence to ensure that these bad things don't happen. The whole facade of civilization is just coming down. We want to defend it with bombs and wars and so on, but that's not all that's going to do is further the process of it coming down. It's all inevitable. So the point is, um, we have the opportunity. How many people in the world are for peace? And how many people in the world really are for war? If everyone in the world who exists in the world is for peace, could understand this point that we can all have peace if we unify and change the time and say, that's it, we're going into a new time. We're going from a time of war to a time of peace. We're going from a time of fear to a time of love. We're going from a time of chaos to a time of harmony.
we're going to solve our problems ourselves and we're going to enter a new, in a new time that is going to reorganize our mind, that's going to reorganize um, how we function in the world, that's going to reorganize our priorities. Rather than building more things, we want to, we want to repair the damage.